conversation now with Michael Wild. He's an immigration attorney and author of this book, Safe Haven in America, Battles to Open the Golden Door. So good to have you with us, Michael. You, I, I'm glad to get your expertise and your perspective on, on all things immigration right now. There's a lot going on. What we just heard from Nick Valencia there is that these passport denials have happened under past administrations. Um, it is complicated. It's nuanced. Is what's happening, though, illegal? From 1960 to 2008, there were 75 midwives that were found to have committed fraud. In 2009, the ACLU settled a lawsuit because they began to do this under prior administrations. Is it illegal for the government to ferret out fraud? No, it has a policy interest in making sure if there is fraud that they mark it down. But there's certainly an escalation now at the border on those that are more vulnerable. This is an unprecedented power grab compounded with the building of the wall, the Muslim ban, the children being stopped at the border, clients of ours being arrested in green card interviews and ultimately the denaturalization um, unit that the president is putting forward. All of these are all legal, but they're murky areas where they're dabbling and they're intimidating citizens. And here literally, Anna, they're citizens, they're uniformed, they're officers that are coming back and forth. Midwives now have to be cooperated with family Bibles, prenatal records, and even other neonatal or medical records if you want to get an extension of your passport. They were born in America. They were issued passports before. Now they're refusing to give them again. I just think it's an unnecessary prosecution. If it is going to be prosecuted, it has to be done criminally. They cannot put individuals like this in detention centers, which has been uh, reported, unfortunately, right. these are citizens. Why? But the DOJ, in their statement, when we reached out to them about what was going on, I mean, they say the U.S.-Mexico border region happens to be an area of the country where there has been a significant incidents of citizenship fraud. I'm quoting there, and they, they point out examples of applicants who have both a U.S. birth certificate and a Mexican birth certificate, for example. So they say it's on them, uh, the applicant, to prove where they were born. Well, if you live at the border, you have reason often to travel to Mexico and the United States, and the United States is never offended with a dual national. You have to prove something that, number one, you have absolutely no memory of because you were physically mm -hmm. born, and you have to now substantiate something that people could take for granted. Look, with technology at the foot, I ask you, when it came to the children who are being stopped at the border seeking safe haven, and now this debate. Why aren't we using technology? Why can't midwives take a photo or have a date stamp and, and coordinate with lo local county hospitals and clerks? I'm a former mayor in New Jersey where I live. It's so easy to put in positions and technology to make sure you can cooperate this. Every iPhone now has a date stamp mm -hmm. on the photo, and you can now make this something that you take in your stride. But it's the intimidation in this new normal where immigration is a ping pong that's being bantered about that is just unconscionable and unacceptable. These are American citizens whose facilitation of commerce should not be inhibited and they should not be intimidated by not only the new administration, but by wondering if they're gonna get back in. Imagine a, a gentleman wearing a uniform now being told he's not an American citizen or a border patrol agent. That's absurd. Michael Wilde, it's good to have you with us. Pleasure. Thank you very much Thank you. for being here. The enemy of the people. That